We live in the perfect time for anybody to start a business and for that business to blow up. Be proud of what you're doing and talk about it like it's the best thing in the world. Like, don't be shy about it. Today we have Darby Kennedy, better known as Malibu Darby. <laughs> Darby first fell in love with fashion in high school when she took an introductory sewing and design course. After pursuing a degree in legal communication from Howard University, she decided to take her talents to the tech world and move to San Francisco, California. While living in the Bay Area, she started shooting bikini campaigns for brands on Instagram. And after some time, she had the vision to start her own inclusive swimming swimwear company and reignite her passion for design. From there, Malibu Darby was born. And insert my glasses. <laughs> Darby, <laughs> welcome to the Pros on Process stage. I'm so Thank excited. You. Um, I got the privilege of meeting you while at Howard. Um, one of my fondest memories is connecting on my first international trip to China, being an organization we were both uh, involved in, the Freshman Leadership Academy. Yeah. Um, fast forward to today, and you're already the leader of your own brand. Let's start from your vision, right? So. You were shooting campaigns in the Bay Area and you said you noticed a gap that needed to be filled. What exactly was that gap and how does Mar Malibu Darby fill it? I moved out to the Bay like immediately after college, started my first tech job. And I've never felt like the most outwardly confident person. And a huge part of my job every day is like being able to speak in front of people and have this outward presence and command a room. And so I was looking for ways just to like boost my own self-confidence. And so on one of my solo travels, um, on a trip to the Bahamas, I actually decided that I was gonna do a photo shoot for myself. It was something I'd never done. And I wanted to do like a beach photo shoot and just try something I'd never, never done before. Um, I found a really, really dope photographer. He made me feel super comfortable. The shoot was amazing. Um, and I just felt like so much life from that. Like, I was like, I love this. Like, I want to keep doing this. And so um, after that, I went back to the Bay and I had posted those pictures online from the shoot and I got such great feedback. And I had a lot of brands start reaching out to me who wanted me to like promote their swimwear online and stuff like that. But there, there was still something missing about it. Like I was feeling fulfilled from the photo shoots, but I was like, I wasn't super in love with some of the swimsuits that I was getting. And I also just was missing a, a little bit of that like creative fulfillment. And so, and, and the other part about that is all of the brands that I was like modeling for all had the same kind of model look. And so I wasn't seeing any diversity in the girls really, or like, even for me, like I might've been, um, maybe they were targeting me intentionally because they didn't have a lot of representation among minorities for their models. So like I was seeing some of these things and I just didn't like it. And I was like, I want to start my own brand. Like I want to create my own stuff. I want to hire my own models. I want to put my own brand image out there. Um, and so it came from a mix of things, a little bit of like trying to boost my own self-confidence and, and push myself as well as like wanting to extend that same sense of um like gratification that i felt when i did these photo shoots to other women for them to feel just as beautiful and just as empowered um so that's that's that gap that i wanted to fill and and that's really why i started malibu darby that's a very honorable thing to you know not only take note of but then take action towards solving right um i do think there's a lot of empowerment that goes into being tapped for those opportunities, but then seeing that there's a gap in representation and wanting to fill that with your brand is super not admirable. So congratulations on even being able to do that. Um, and so then you've got your eyes set on Malibu Darby as a brand, exploring swimwear, and you're currently a one woman show, right? Yes, I, we say that loosely because right. there's no way I could get to this point solely by myself but when i say one woman show i mean i don't have a dedicated team yet 
um, but I would like to. And I am putting in the work to find those people that I think could really be a part of my team as I'm growing. There are a couple people, though, that have really changed the game for me when it comes to building my brand. Um, I've worked with some incredible graphic designers. Uh, one of them, Evan Lawson, actually went to Howard. She actually was the person that helped me bring my logo to life because that's one of the things I can't really do is like digitally design. And that's half the battle is finding those people that are willing to lend their support early on when we don't necessarily have the resources to like fund a team. Yeah. Um, but that aside, I think there's a lot to say be said about you being the the visionary behind the designs and the um, concepts of what you're bringing to life from an idea to a physical product. Yep. Can you walk people through what that process is tactically? So if you could like tell somebody who's never navigated, you know, creating a, a swimsuit, how to start. Um, yeah. what you, say? you can start any kind of fashion brand and not necessarily have like sewing skills or um, like even really thorough artistic skills, right? Like if you have a vision and you can explain that to somebody who does know how to do that, you can create anything you want. Um, so th the first thing that I had to do is really realize what my strengths and my weaknesses were and where I was going to need help along the way. The first step is like your ideas and your inspiration, right? Like what do you want to create? What is inspiring you? What's trending? Like you really need to sit back and think about like, okay, what do I want to make first? So that's the first step. The second step is sketching it out, drawing it. Even if it's just a rough sketch, like I said, if you don't have a lot of artistic skills, that's fine. Um, anything that you can put to paper to really like put, take those ideas out of your head, um, that's the second step. The third step I would say is sourcing fabric and also doing your research to figure out, okay, if I'm going to manufacture this piece, um, what are the best manufacturers in my area? Or do I want to make this domestically or do I want to produce it overseas? Like what, what kind of process are you going to go through there and what makes the most sense for your business? I always suggest um, getting multiple samples made from different manufacturers because you, you can talk to people all day, but you really don't know what they're going to be able to produce and the quality that they're going to be able to produce so giving yourself enough lead time like let's say i wanted to drop something in the summertime some things honestly take like up to a year to make like because you'll get a sample and it might not be right and then you have to go back and forth and you're making alterations and so many things change along the way so you want to give yourself enough lead time from whenever you want to launch to actually go through the sample creation process to getting an actual piece that you're happy with that you can take to production. Something that I've added into my routine though, which I will say is a game changer in that process is so normally I, I used to just sketch like strictly on paper, um, pencil, paper, just sketch it out. I don't really use colored pencils or anything like that. Um, but I'll, I'll have like very detailed notes on the side, like, noting what colors things should be, what kind of fabric, all that stuff. And then that's what I would send to my manufacturer. But since then, I have found someone incredible, um, a fashion student who's based in Milan, who specializes in creating 3D clothing, like on the computer. So I will actually take my sketches to her now. She'll build a 3D model of it. I'll get to almost work back and forth with her daily, like, let's change this, let's tweak this. And now I'm actually seeing my things come to life before I have to go through that really long sample creation process. And then I can take that digital version that's like nearly perfect to what I see in my head, share that with the manufacturer, and now they get my vision even more. And then after you get to your final sample and you take things to production, um, you can pretty much start shooting then. I mean, when you have your samples and you're, you're happy with what you have, um, you can start shooting content, you can start doing all that creative fun stuff, like coming up with photo shoot concepts and, and all that good stuff, finding models. Um, so the content comes in after you've got your, uh, your samples that you're happy with. And then from there, you produce them and you put them online and <laughs> hopefully people love them. <laughs> Watch the, the money roll in. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. I love that. Thank you for being so thorough in the step-by-step. -step. I think there's so many 
parts of the process that a lot of people don't really take the time to like iron out or maybe yeah. they just I mean, some people get their start in different ways. You have people that have ideas or concepts and they go straight to like those like custom ink or, you know, yeah. websites that are able to just plug something out with a design on it, which I think that works for some people. But yeah. you took the route of actually designing your your work and then working with manufacturers to do the the manual labor of creating those pieces. There was a huge learning curve in some aspects. Yeah. Um, what advice would you give for people looking to venture into fashion as it relates to aspects of business that maybe they should brush up on before diving in head first or yeah. you know to navigate that space? Nothing can really prepare you for how things go in real life, right? Like all the research and preparation in the world does not mean that everything's going to go perfectly. So having some sense of a plan, a course of action that can keep you uh, well-rounded and, and just grounded throughout your entire journey when you're making something is really, really important. Um, the other thing that I, I didn't really know going into this business was how crucial and critical Facebook ads are and so, social media ads in general, like Instagram ads, Facebook ads um, are super, super important and they can be very technical. Um, and there's a lot of ad strategy behind some of the biggest campaigns that you see um, there are agencies and people out there that are really solid and specialized in this kind of stuff and you can hire them. But if you are working with a really limited budget in the beginning or you want to save the majority of your funding for the actual um, creation of your products, then you're going to have to figure it out yourself. So some of my biggest tools are um, YouTube, honestly, and like Google and just researching and figuring out what I can learn on hand and then just like a test and learn product. Like I've pushed out ads before with certain audiences to see how they worked. And afterwards we'll look at the, the results and the progress. And then from there we'll tweak. And the final thing that I wanted to touch on is trademarking. So it's super important for anybody that's starting their own business to protect themselves, protect their name, protect whatever it is that they're creating, especially, if it's super unique or like a technical product or something like that, um, trademarking and really owning whatever it is that you're putting out there is very important. Um, trademarking lawyers can be super expensive as well. But like I said, with research, you can really figure out and learn anything yourself online. Um, but that, that process in itself can take up to a year, maybe even longer. So um, just being well prepared in advance is really key. Truly, and with a name like Malibu Barbie, or Darby, I'm sure it was important to kind of claim that it's super catchy. Somebody was likely gonna try and like finesse that onto their <laughs> soon. I'm glad that you were able to take the brand and really create ownership around that. Um, so congrats on that step. A lot of people, um, find themselves in sticky situations if they don't do that. Shifting gears a little bit into how you evolved the brand into online shopping. So it went beyond just designing these concepts and modeling these concepts, but now you're like selling these um, designs for people to wear themselves. What steps did you take to set up your online shop in digital presence? Yeah. Are there any platforms that you would give advice for people looking to sell, you know, uh, their own merchandise, anything that you would recommend for people to look into? Um, I was seeing things like Big Cartel, Shopify, um, Wix are all super popular. I personally chose to go with Shopify um, for the fact that I felt like the interface was really user friendly and it took the complication out of designing a website. Um, they have a ton of free templates that will just really allow you to like plug and chug, like drop your photos in and it's, it's like seamless. Um, and then they also have themes that you can pay for, which are a little bit more expensive, but they come with more components, like something as small as like, um, a bubble that pops up as soon as you visit my website, that's going to give you 10% off if you sign up for my newsletter. Those are features that you'll find on um, paid themes that you might not find on the free themes. So it kind of depends what you're looking for. And as your business evolves, you might need more of those kinds of features. Um, but at this point, I, I haven't ever hired a web designer. I've 
been able to do everything myself through Shopify. Um, and they're also super great with payments as well. They accept like everything, PayPal, um, every kind of major credit card. So I've been super happy with them and I'd highly recommend. And they also have great customer service. Like I've had instances where things were going wrong with my website and I literally was able to pick up the phone and like maybe waited 10 minutes and someone at Shopify's customer service was able to walk me through the problem and like completely helped me and was like, are you satisfied? I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm super happy. Thank you. But um, I've been super happy from their customer service to how easy it is to um, build a website yourself that looks really, really professional. That's incredible. And I commend you for being able to do that. Um, <laughs> that's impressive. Your website <laughs> looks really good. So good job on that. Um, I, I've been a frequent visitor, as you can tell from the that I have on. Um, so I do also second that it's a very customer friendly uh, platform and it was a good choice for your brand Thank you. um, alongside the website right you have this um instagram page and you're creating content consistently are you also manning that page yourself and like what tools do you use kind of to stay on top of that content calendar that you have yeah i am doing my social media myself too and i sighed a little bit because i'm at the point now where i need to like start delegating tasks and finding people that can really do that and manage some of those things for me so i can focus on the designs one of the tools that i use to plan the content there is an app called preview and literally it's kind of like a fake instagram you can just like drop in your pictures and if you're someone that cares about what the actual layout of your Instagram looks like. It's a really nice feature to be able to use that before you actually post something to see like, okay, aesthetically, does this all match? Is it giving the vibe that I want to give? Like those kinds of things. So I use preview a lot just to see how things are gonna look on the grid before I post them. I'll just search like which hashtags are um, like trending in fashion or in swimwear. And those are always a good idea to like tag, maybe not necessarily in your caption, but you can like, if you wanna hide your hashtags, you can comment on your own picture and then reply to that comment and then put all the hashtags there. So it's not like in everybody's face, like taking up space, um, but researching hashtags to use are good too, because it will get you extra exposure and you just never know who's gonna stumble upon your stuff. So. Um, any tool that you can use to get your, your posts out there more are super helpful. Another tool that I use is uh, Facebook Ads Manager. They have a, a feature that allows you to see what other big brands are putting out there for their ads, what kind of copy they use on those ads and things like that. Um, and if you're building your ads yourself and you wanna post your ads on Instagram, that is also a really nice tool because I mean, it, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. If you can see what these other huge brands are doing and how their ads are being successful, you can take some of that and repurpose it for your own business. So um, I use that feature on Facebook Ads Manager as well. That's incredible. You are dropping some real gems. I'm taking notes um, <laughs> and I will definitely be rewatching this to see <laughs> to plug into for my business too. Like I use a platform called Canva for my content creation, but I'm more graphic focused and less photo focused. So if you are more of a creative who uses like quote cards and mm -hmm. animations and things like that, Canva could be a good uh, resource to you just to plug that one. Um, and shifting gears a little bit. So you, as the CEO and face of the company, you also model for the company. There's a lot of roles that you play in the, in the life of your brand. And I'm sure networking has to come in major for the connections that you're able to build brand partnerships things like that um what tips do you have for business owners who are looking to make meaningful relationships in this space and how has it come to life through your brand so the the thing that i struggled with most in the beginning when it came to networking was being my own biggest advocate and it sounds kind of silly but um, I didn't start out as an entrepreneur or as a designer, I started out in tech. And so when I would meet new people and they would ask me what I did, I would always say I worked in tech and explain the tech stuff. And I wouldn't really talk about the design stuff as much. And it's kind of funny if my boyfriend was present for those, con the, like those kind of conversations or first time meeting other people, he would always interject and say, 
and and she designed swimwear and she's got her own swimwear line and then they would be like oh wow that's so cool i've never met a designer and they'd light up and want to talk to me about that so he helped a lot <laughs> with just getting me more comfortable and open and with people to talk about those kinds of things and um, being proud of that too so i think um the first thing is whether your company is huge like whether it's big or small be proud of what you're doing and talk about it like it's the best thing in the world like don't be shy about it um the other tip that i have when it comes to networking and building meaningful relationships is when you're having conversation naturally you're going to learn about someone else and what they're doing and you're going to talk about yourself but i think it's more important to focus on um learning and understanding what the person you're talking to what they're all about what they what their interests are and then trying to like find if there are some similarities between the two or ways that you guys could potentially collaborate but like when you're networking with people you never never want to make them feel like you're out there to use them or you're you're just trying to get in front of them because they're a big name or something like that. Like you'd be surprised how many people just genuinely want help or, or want new ideas and are welcome to that. So if you're super genuine in your approach and you have intention behind your reason for speaking with them, um, I think that will definitely show through. So being genuine and always, always root, like rooting back to, well, what can I help them with? Like, how can I add value to them? What do they need? And really listening is key. Um, a lot of people speak uh, <laughs> and and want to get their point out, but not enough people listen. So um, I think that those are super important. That's incredible. I love that advice. Leaning in with listening first is important. Expressing genuine interest, I think, just naturally makes people open up a little bit more about um, who they are, what they like to do, and you can then pull from that how you could potentially collaborate if there is room for that. And I loved your first point on just being an advocate for yourself. That's a space that I could do a lot more in as well. And um, I think I'm trying to create more of a platform for people to get comfortable in advocating for themselves and the what they do. So I really appreciate you honing in on that one. I do like to ask people to, as a part of their journey, every entrepreneur, every entrepreneur I talk to um, has moments in their journey where they're like, oh, if I could have gone back and done this, differently, I would have. Or maybe if there isn't something that you would go back and do differently, if all things stayed the same, what advice would you give for to help other entrepreneurs avoid any mistakes that you might have made along the way in the past? Yeah. I, I don't really believe in regrets because I think everything brings you exactly to where you're supposed to be for one reason or another. But if there was one thing that I could do differently, it honestly would have been to just start sooner. Um, I, I talked myself out of it so many times before I actually pulled the trigger and just tried. And when I when I look back at that, I kind of consider it almost like wasted time. Like there are so many things that I had to learn in my first year that if I would have learned them a little bit sooner, I could have been at this point now six months ago. You know, so. I don't, I don't want to say I fully regret it, but I do wish sometimes that I would have just started sooner because, I mean, we live in the perfect time for anybody to start a business and for mm -hmm. that business to blow up. And now you can quit your corporate job and do what you love. Like, you know, so if, if there's anyone out there that is thinking about starting their own business, but is hesitant for whatever reason, my advice to them would be not to wait. Um, I just think there's no time like the present. If you have those ideas now, you might as well work on them and put them out there. At the very least, start to work on a business plan or like figure out how how would I actually if I, if I wanted to make this a reality for myself, how would I do that? Um, yeah. So I would I would have started sooner if I could go back. <laughs> I love that. I love that, and not necessarily a regret, but something that you think would have just propelled you a little bit further had you had that opportunity. I like that. Yeah. Um, and I always love to ask too, um, as a way to part, um, what are you excited about in the future, right? You're building this brand, you have so much momentum, you're dropping a new line soon. Maybe we are getting a little tease at some stuff <laughs> that you have. Yes. Um, where, what are you excited about one and where can viewers and listeners 
learn more about you and your work and the products that you're bringing to life. Yeah, thank you for asking that. Um, so I'm super excited on the collection that I'm currently wearing. Um, it's called Twin Flame and I actually am teasing it out tonight. So I've been teasing it a little bit on my story but I haven't actually posted about it or allowed people to pre-order. So I'm gonna be doing that this evening, um, actually right after this call. And um, it's, I have some samples right here that I would love to show you just of the fabric of like a more close up look at it. But um, it's this beautiful, like bright blue and orange flame pattern. And twin flame is kind of, that's like the inspiration behind the name is the duality and the colors. But then they also have this super cute, like V detailing in the front. It's kind of hard to tell but when you wear it on your skin it kind of cuts like right around your belly button and then there are also two cuts um, on each of the cups on top like like little v cuts so showing a little bit of skin but it's like sexy skin um, i'm super excited about that because for the first time ever i will be having men's trunks so it's <laughs> it's not going to be just for women um they're going to be swim trunks um cover-ups bikinis bucket hats so it's going to be a whole a whole production but for anybody that wants to check out uh the twin flame collection or to pre-order it they can go to malibudarby.com or shopmalibudarby.com um and you can also find those on my instagram at shop malibu darby and if you want to follow me you can follow me at malibu darby <laughs> oh my goodness i was having many heart attacks after every piece <laughs> of that that is incredible i'm so excited to see you completely take over and dominate swimwear from both the male and female perspective this is incredible um congratulations on venturing into that lane and for dropping new products bucket hats are the move i'm definitely into the bucket hat vibe so it's giving bondel is about to be right back on the website again um so thank you so much for teasing that out and by the time we drop this episode you will be already well within like production of the whole thing um but i'm happy to have been one of the first people that knows about the drop so thank yes. you so much for letting me know that and i'm excited to tap in with you on that thank you thank you so much for having me and for just okay. letting me share my story i really appreciate it no this was so fun it's been incredible to learn more about you darby um i know we haven't gotten a chance to touch base personally but i'm excited to do that um and thank you for demystifying parts of your creative process um, all the people that have tuned in to Pros on Process, thank you for joining. Pros on Process will continue to pull back the curtain on obscure aspects of the creative process. And to the TP tribe, if there are ever any questions that maybe we weren't able to cover during our short time together, make sure to leave a comment in the comments below and we'll be sure to bring on a pro to help tackle some of those inquiries. But in the meantime, make sure to subscribe to the channel and um, that'll ensure that you can stay in the loop on all things pros on process. Leave the video a thumbs up to let us know to keep them coming and we'll see you next time. <laughs>